Hello, this is Tom Butts with Accelerated Concepts in Tampa, Florida, and we're going to talk today about the 6200 FX cellular extender. Let's start by unboxing the unit. So if you look at the box, by the way, you'll also notice we've got serial number, MAC address, everything associated with the device and also barcodes for ease of tracking. So but let's open the unit up. First thing we see is the unit itself. We'll look at that. Pretty straightforward signal strength meter here on the front. Uh, in a little compartment, I'll show you details of that. Let's pull the rest of this out. A little quick start guide. A six foot, uh, two meter uh, ethernet cable. A bunch of install options. A temporary battery pack. A power ethernet cable. And of course, our power supply. And this is an international power supply. It works anywhere in the world. And uh, these little caps here will unclick and let you change it out to whatever the proper plug is you need for the receiving country. Okay, so let's open the unit up. The unit itself has no cellular capabilities without a USB-based USB radio. So let's put that inside. First thing we're gonna do is take a standard Phillips head screw, remove that. Set that aside. Now we open the compartment. What we're going to test today is an AT&T radio. Uh, this is a Momentum radio. It's LTE capable. Uh, there is a whole list of radios that this product supports. You can get them on our website at acceleratedconcepts.com. Step one, we'll insert our SIM card. So now this radio is ready to go. And we can insert this radio inside the unit as such. Now, why do you want to put the unit on the inside, the radio? Well, the point of this is, is that this is, a, this is a case designed not to interfere at all with the cellular strength. And number two, this hides the radio in a retail type environment or other uh, environment. Sometimes we found that the radio will disappear if it's not hidden inside. Okay, the radio is installed. There is an external USB port if you want to put it on the outside. You also notice there's an Ethernet port. Here's the power, and here's a punch out for an antenna. And we'll talk about the capabilities of remote antennas and other things. Again, on the back, on the, on the panel label, you will see MAC address, serial number, same as you saw on the side of the box. And here are the mounting options. This is a specially designed uh, compartment or slot or indention that will hold a zip tie. So if you want to zip tie this to something, you can. You can use uh, different install options. Here's a standard drywall type screw where you can screw it right to a wall and it hit the screws go in here and then lock on that bottom part. You can also tie it to or lock it to a dropped ceiling. And if you look at the suspended ceiling, the one we have above us, you can see there's rails on that ceiling. So these are designed to clip onto that rail. So they go into these slots and lock in and then you can snap tie uh, or snap on to the ceiling with these connectors. So that's the various options. So that's the unboxing. We're going to do a install right now and we'll be back in just a second. Okay, today we're going to install the 6200 FX as a cellular extender to the AT&T VPN Gateway 8200. This product is capable of having two WAN devices and the FX will be plugging into one of these two. This is going to have a primary Ethernet connection coming off of a provider and the FX6200 will plug into the secondary WAN port as a backup to the primary connection. So this is going to mount up here. We'll, we'll, we'll bore you with that detail. Well, let's take the 6200 FX. We've installed the battery pack, the temporary battery pack. I'm going to say that too many times during the video. But the idea of this being, let me go find the optimal place to do signal strength without having to carry around an extension cord or something else. So I powered the unit up, and you notice here on the front, there's 2G, 3G, and 4G. Right now we're a 3G signal with three bars right here by where they're gonna install the, the uh, VPN gateway. That is not what we're looking for. There is, we hope, LTE in this area. So we're gonna go see if we can find a better place for signal strength. So step one is we've tested right by where the device is installed. Step two, we're gonna go outside and see what kind of signal strength we can get outside. We'll be back in just a second with an outside view. Okay, folks, we're outside here in beautiful 
Tampa, Florida, and we're measuring signal strength outside the building. That is step two if I don't have optimal. So now if you zoom in, you'll notice we have both are blue, meaning we like our USB radio and it is LTE and we have five bars of signal strength out here. So we got great signal strength, we just need to find a way to get it indoors. Let's go back indoors. Okay, we are in one of the offices over near one of the windows. You can see we still have LTE and we still have five bars of signal strength. The way you find the optimal place in a building is go to each one of the corners and work your way around, pausing about 30 seconds in each site uh, that you want to test and it will then figure out the current signal strength. So we are good to go in this office. So we are going to mount this here. We'll, talk, we'll show you how to mount it and what we need to do to make it run on remote power. Because if you look, up here there's no power anywhere. We don't have anywhere to do it. So most places, uh, for safety reasons, you cannot mount it above about six feet in the air. So we're going to mount it right over here and uh, uh, then we're going to run Ethernet. But in this particular case, to make it look a little nicer and we don't have a safety inspector here, we're going to mount it up closer to the ceiling and give it a nicer look and feel. All right, be right back once we get everything organized. Okay, we're going to now hook up to the AT&T VPN gateway. You can see it has already got its broadband connection. We are going to plug into the secondary WAN port. We've already run our piece of CAT5 over to where the 6200 is going to be located. Standard CAT5, nothing special. And we need to inject power. So we got the PoE injector. Step one is I plug the power supply into AC. I'm going to plug that into that jack connector and you'll notice the red LED that says DC will be lit. It says, hey, you do have power going there. Step two is we plug this end into the device. The device isn't plugged in so it doesn't light up. And then we'll plug the CAT5 into this. So this is connected up to the end device. It doesn't have to be this AT&T device. It can be any device. The power is injected in and we're sending the, the power over the unused wires on this piece of CAT5 over there. So what will happen is when we plug the 6200 in on the other side and we'll come back and show it to you, this LED will be green. So first LED red tells you that you've got power being injected and green says the device on the far end is now fired up. Okay, we're going to go mount the 6200, be right back. Hey, welcome back. You can see we've run our piece of CAT5 over from the place where the device, end device, VPN device is installed and we have our 6200 and we're going to mount it on the ceiling rails. So the way that works is you take the little ceiling clip that matches the strap up there and just a little click, just a little twist, again just a little twist and you're ready to go. Now first things first, let's plug the ethernet cable in. You'll notice we have power. So I'm happy, I've got power. And then it's just a matter of clicking it on the rail and you're good to go. Okay, we're back over by the VPN device. We're done with our installation. We've got our four bars over there. We've got LTE five bars. And now you'll notice that the green LED is lit on the PoE injector that says the far side is up. I'm ejecting power. We're done at this point. Thank you for watching this. What we're gonna do is have a small adjunct here that shows you how to use an external antenna with this device but if you're not interested in external antennas you're done any questions any notes just send to support at excelicon.com that's a-c-c-e-l-e-c-o-n.com thank you very much for watching okay since you're still watching uh let's talk about external antennas uh, the one we're going to recommend here for this application is a uh, Sierra Wireless is actually made by Netgear now, and uh, it has a short, mm, I would say one meter, three foot piece of uh, uh, lead on it, and two TS9 connectors. These connectors are important because the device we're going to put it on is the AT&T Momentum, uh, which has TS9 connectors, all Sierra Wireless do. Other ones have CRC9 and others. If you have any questions, again, please reach out to us at support at Excelicon.com, that's A-C-C. E-L-E-C-O-N.com. But let's go ahead and show you how to install this. So step one is we need to open up the case. We already had prior put the radio inside of the case. Pull the radio out. And the radio has two little ports in it. You can see here. Now since this is an LTE radio, it needs two antennas. So we'll hook up the TS9 connectors to these two little ports. 
but step one is we've got to poke out the antenna port. Now this has set up for an SMA connector, so you can screw it down in. But in this particular case, we don't want to use any additional connectors because connectors lose signal strength. So we're just going to pop these two guys in here. Now we hook them up to the antenna. It doesn't matter which one goes to which. We put the case back on there. And now we insert it into the port. Do I have that correct? No, I don't. And you can see the external antennas are installed. Let's put the cover back on. Again, the cover is just designed to hide that radio so people won't see it and decide it's something they can use in their laptop. Put the screw back on. And now we've got the external antenna. So you're saying, well, Tom, what do I do with a three foot long antenna? Well, the design point is you take this as far as you can using category five and then drill a hole in the wall and put this outside, screwed to the wall. Again, it's designed as where people walking by won't try and tear it off or anything else. But we've minimized the piece of coax or wire in this case. You go across where you lose a lot of signal. And what we have found is this is very effective. So again, take the 6200 as far as you can, right by the hole you're gonna make, run the, the Cat5 you saw earlier, the power over Ethan and everything else, then add on this external antenna. And again, if this is not the antenna you wanna use, Please contact us. We'll help you with the design of your antenna. Thank you very much for watching.